in your concept, God is a father and a son, and there's a loving relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. In our human father and son relationship, when there is an option of volunteering, yeah. I don't think a loving father would send his son to go and get the hanging and the bullet. The father will say, okay, if he was to save you, I will go in your stead. But I would not let my son be hurt even to a little bit. This is because I love my son. In your belief, you had the option, but that didn't happen. Yeah. I'm not going to question the, 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 the judgment and the wisdom of God, but I'm saying, if you look at it now, it is apparently very selfish. So you have to now give us a rational explanation why this apparent selfishness is actually okay. So the answer that I would give, so sec the second answer I would give, other than judging God's man, is that it's not just the Father who loves us, but Jesus loved us as well. He says um, that um, I have come for my sheep. Uh, that a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. We are his sheep. Jesus Christ came as a shepherd and laid down his life willingly for us. He loved us. Why didn't the Father come and die for us? Why didn't the Son come and die for us? That was the plan. To say anything else is, is, is to judge God and place ourselves above him. But I can tell, say this, that Jesus loved us and wanted to come. He wanted to come. We are the children of God alongside him. And he said, I'm going to come and save my brothers and sisters. So he came. He went to the cross. The Bible says he set his face. His goal was to go to the cross to die there to save all of us. Because was he, he willing? loved was us. Was he willing? He was willing all the time. That's he, what the Bible says. So he, the Bible says he set his face for Jerusalem. He said, no, my time has not yet come. He was almost stoned a whole bunch of time. People almost picked up stones to stone him, but instead he left. He somehow got out of the what crowd. What did he pray because in the garden he, of Hold on, because he said, my time is not yet. Who are you to make a commentary? Jesus, Jesus knew. Of <laughs> that his, Jesus no, no, knew. I, I cannot respect you. Just sorry, one second, sorry, one second. Do you know the reason why, no, hang on, you can continue. The reason why, excuse me, the reason why, excuse me, let me show you why you're so deceptive. You're so deceptive. You need to come honest and clean and fair, right? Don't put light in my in, in my eyes. Don't do that. I don't like lights put in my eyes. Excuse me, don't, don't. You are so deceptive. I would like you, cameraman for the Christian community, be honest, be sincere, be fair, and be just. Right. I would like you and your audience to watch SC Dawa channel, where the latest video about Hafs reading is uploaded to debunk your lies and your deceptions. So now you know, you're going to put that in your video, SC Dawa. In that channel, there's a video called Hafs Quran. I preserve reading indeed, refuting and debunking your lies and deception that you always try to put up. So let's go back. So to continue. himself yes. to show his justice to right? save me because he loved me yeah so God loves you even though you, are, you have transgressed the laws of God yeah. you have transgressed the laws of God yes. God's anger God is angry at you yes. so he punishes you because he's just yes. but he doesn't actually punish you he voluntarily punishes himself now the nature of the punishment is what I was discussing with you what is the nature of the punishment so you said God separated from himself the punishment can you explain that God is God. Can God separate from himself? When he's punishing himself, how is he separating from himself? So, one of the key differences between the God described in the Quran and the God described in the Bible is that the God of the Bible is in community. So the reason we, we, we love and we appreciate friends and family and we love that time and that communication with each other is the Bible says, is because we're made in the image of a God who is three in one. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. Forever in eternity, they were in a loving, perfect relationship with each other, the Bible describes. And that's why we friends and family and relationships like that, because we're made in an image of God who is three in one. And so on the cross, Jesus, the Son of God, was separated when he took all of our sins on himself. And he was separated from the Father. What do you mean by God is separating from Himself? Can God separate from so Himself? The person of Jesus, the Son, so was separated you, so from, now from the Father. So now you're no longer talking about God. So three, you're one God, God so three persons. So, so the person the first, the first, you actually deceived me in thinking that this is God punishing Himself. Actually, here, that's not the case. God is punishing someone else who was on the cross. No, Jesus was God. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you simply what the Bible says. What do you think? When you use the word God, when God punishes, you mean the Father punishes the Son. Yeah. Now that's being precise. Okay. So that's unjust. Unjust in the first place. Anyway, the Father. Unjust. Well, well, are you are you a God? My God. Okay. Are you a son of a father? Yeah. Good. If there was an option to volunteer to either take on the punishment yourself. Or your father, do you not think your father should volunteer himself to take the punishment rather than you to get punished for something? I have a, I have an older brother. My older brother was going to die, and I had the option to save him. I love him, so I would. Jesus is the son of God. He was made man like us. He was the son of God. And so we are also God's children. Jesus died to save all so my the rest of God's children. Why is the father, yeah. why did he not volunteer? And like a selfish individual, I'm sorry to use this word, I apologize. Like a selfish individual, like a selfish. Oh, sorry. Extremist behavior. You have the father who is going to punish. So let's, let's recap. Let's recap the scenario first. Yes, you're good. The father. The father. This is good. In your belief, the Father God, God the Father, in your belief, yes, yeah, yeah. In what the Bible says, is yeah. angry. Yes. It's not the Son who's angry, it's the Father who's angry. Is that correct? Uh, it's an interesting question. I'm not sure. Uh, the Bible is clear that God is angry. Okay. It's unspecified. Never mind. So, well, I don't know. to it punish them, to punish them, I don't know everything. Between these to three, us. between these three persons, as you said, there we go, yeah. Now we have a volunteer. Yeah. Now either the Holy Spirit could have volunteered. Uh, no, he couldn't have. He couldn't have. The Son could have volunteered and the Father could have volunteered. Only the Son could have volunteered. Why could the Son not have volunteered? Because only the Son came in the flesh. Wait, wait. Why couldn't the Father come in the flesh? That's an interesting question. That's my point. The Father should have come into flesh, volunteer. Should have. And no. If the Father, look, look, do you remember your Bible says, yeah. God so loved the world, yeah. meaning who, the Father? For God so loved the but world that he, he sent the, his he, one and only Son, so right. that whoever believes in him shall not sure. die forever, sure. but shall have eternal so life with him. That statement, an incredible in the, message of love. That statement in the Bible yeah. is so selfish. I'll oh. demonstrate how selfish it is. God here means the Father because he's sending the Son. Yeah. It's not the Son sending the Father. So the Father loved the world so much that he sent his Son. Yeah. So the question is quite obvious. Who did the Father love more, the world or his Son? Because he's trying to save someone. The one who he loves more is the one he's saving. And he's punishing the one who doesn't love more. So God, according to your Bible, he says, God loved the world so much that he sent his son to take away the what? All this punishment. So, I understand. so, so let me finish. Really let, me finish. Let, me finish. Okay. let me finish. So you have now have a God, a father, yeah. who seems to be very selfish. Yeah. Instead of Except dying sending, himself. Dying himself, yeah, he punishes He punishes his, his son. son. Yeah. Now that is a selfish father. Yeah. That's one thing that we need to justify why it's got to do that. Yep. Second point is, yep. you said the punishment is separation from God. Uh, how does things. how does God separate from Himself? Is it even a meaningful question? So the first thing, um, what's so why didn't the God why didn't God the Father come and die for us? Why did God the Son come and die for us? 
to ask, why did God? He should have, according to your yeah. logic. Or should have? Should have. So, the problem with that question is that you're saying, if I say, Allah should do this, Allah should do that, I'm judging Allah and saying, I know more than Allah, I have a better perception of the world, per, uh, perception of the world than Allah, and according to my plan, Allah, you're not really up to my standard of the plan. You're judging God and His actions. That's blasphemous me. That's making yourself God. So the very question makes you claim you're claiming that you're smarter than God. Sorry, um, but that's Before just. Before you go to the next one, can people stop smoking this uh, marijuana or hashish or ganja? Please, right? yeah, this this place free. has become so really thick as corner. Become this kind of things that people are smoking. It's a freeish country. No, 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 no. It's biggest corner. It wasn't like this. Now yeah. we have a group of people always smoking ganja and so on. It's made this place. You can't speak. You can't concentrate because it's affecting you. So before you go to the next so, point, the reason why I ask, you know why the reason I ask? I'm not judging God. I'm simply saying, you in, God your con no, in your concept, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to take my word. Yeah. Yeah. In your concept, God is a father and a son. And there's a loving relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. In our human father and son relationship, when there is an option of volunteering, yeah. I don't think a loving father would send his son to go and get the hanging and the bullet. The father will say, okay, if he was to save you, I will go in your stead. But I would not let my son be hurt even to a little bit. This is because I love my son. In your belief, you had the option, there, but that didn't happen. Yeah. I'm not going to question the, 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 the judgment and the wisdom of God, but I'm saying, if you look at it now, it is apparently very selfish. So you have to now give us a rational explanation why this apparent selfishness is actually okay. So the answer that I would give, so the sec second answer I would give, other than judging God's man, is that it's not just the Father who loves us, but Jesus loved us as well. He says um, that um, I have come for my sheep. Uh, that a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. We are his sheep. Jesus Christ came as a shepherd and laid down his life willingly for us. He loved us. Why didn't the Father come and die for us? Why didn't the Son come and die for us? That was the plan. To say anything else is, is, is to judge God and place ourselves above him. But I can tell, say this, that Jesus loved us and wanted to come. He wanted to come. We are the children of God alongside him and he said I'm gonna come and save my brothers and sisters so he came he went to the cross the Bible says he set his face his goal was to go to the cross to die there to save all of us because was he, he willing? loved was us he, willing? he was willing all the time that's he, what the Bible says so he, the Bible says he set his face for Jerusalem he said no my time has not yet come he was almost stoned a whole bunch of time. People almost picked up stones to stone him, but instead he left. He somehow got out of the what crowd. What did he pray? Because, in the of on, because he said, "My time is not yet." Who are you to make a comment? Jesus so knew so that his. <laughs> Jesus no, no, knew. I, I cannot respect you. Just sorry, one second. Sorry, one second. Do you know the reason why? No, hang on. You can continue. The reason why? Excuse me. The reason why? Excuse me. Let me show you why you are so deceptive. You are so deceptive. You need to come honest and clean and fair, right? Don't put light in my in, in my eyes. Don't do that. I don't like lights put in my eyes. Excuse me, doctor. You are so deceptive. I would like you, cameraman for the Christian community, be honest, be sincere, be fair, and be just. Right. I would like you and your audience to watch SC Dawa channel, where the latest video about Half's reading is uploaded to debunk your lies and your deceptions. So now you know you're going to put that in your video. SC Dawa. In that channel, there's a video called Half's Quran. A preserved reading indeed, refuting and debunking your lies and deception that you always try to put up. So now go back. So to continue. To continue. Why did why did the son come and not the father? No, he was not willing, I said. Oh, he wasn't so we are willing. Not oh, just just read any Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read I have, any of them. I have. I show you. Them, my Maybe you can you, answer why. Well. Read them wrong. So Maybe you want to go? To, so no, Jesus no, no. set he's, his face. He's he not said willing. A, a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus said that. And, and that's I say why he's not he willing. Came. Okay, why do you say he's not willing? Because when he was there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, "Okay, oh, Father, let this cup be away from me." Not according to my will, but according to your will. Yeah. Okay, what was his will and what is his father's will? What is this cup that God, Jesus wants to be removed? Oh. 
separation. Arson's guys, right? It was a seriously okay. awful thing. It wasn't it was like, wait, oh, I'm on the cross and I died. Wait, it was wait, 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 wait. It was, was he a, was he a willing sacrifice or yes. unwilling? Did he stand up then and then go and surrender himself to the gods who came to arrest him and say, no, don't fight, this must happen? Yes, he did all that. Mm -hmm. The gods came to arrest him. His disciples wanted to fight. He's like, no, this is right. This must happen to fulfill um, the law and the prophets. Um, the, At the point you, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. where he was about to be killed, crucified, whatever, right? He was prayed, he a Lord, willing? Can you Christ? take this cup from me? Why did he say that? Was he willing? Because it was such an awful thing. Did you not know that? Sorry? Did you not know that? Yes, he knew that. Right. When you so, pray, are you not honest? Wait, wait. Not expressed Excuse to God? Me. Wait. God, this is so difficult to go out Sorry. and Sorry, I don't think you understood. You. Was he not God then? He was God. Right. So he knew that he shouldn't be saying this because he's supposed to be willing to take it. shouldn't be. You can be honest with God when you wait, pray. Wait, I'm wait, honest wait, with wait. God when I pray. He was God himself, right? Yes. Good. As a God himself, did he know that he was a willing sacrifice? Yes. Good. So why was he saying to himself, or someone up there, let this cup be away from me? Because he was expressing the deep agony. He was so stressed out Did by what he was about that? to go through. Was just Did he not know that beforehand? He knew that he was fully human. Look, it was still was a he? massive deal. As if you're God. about, so I, I'm from South Africa. My girl, uh, I left my girlfriend back home. I knew I'd be coming back, but I still, How she went. Girlfriends? You should have wives. Why, why girlfriends? I'm young. No, I'm only 23. I have one girlfriend. Um, when I left my... No, is that what your Bible teaches? Have girlfriends? Don't change the topic. So when I interesting, isn't when it? I left, when I I'm gonna marry you when I get back. Relax, bro. No rush. Marry her first rush. and then make her a girlfriend. No rush. No rush. No, no. Marry her first and then make her a girlfriend. So um, so, um, so when I left, I knew that I'd be coming back, but I still I almost wept on the plane because I was gonna leave my my uh, the lady that I really care about um, for for twelve months. I'm here for twelve months just because I knew I was gonna. Be, be coming back didn't make it easy. Jesus was about to experience that. He knew how about hard to experience. It was. You don't know that already. He knew. Even. This is my point. He knew what was stop, about to stop, happen, stop. and it was a big Can you deal. slow down a bit? Yeah. Did Jesus not know what he's going to experience and how it feels? How it would feel? Had he experienced? Uh, he was about to experience it. It was a big deal. So he didn't deal. know how it would feel. Oof, that's an interesting question. I knew that he would, all I could tell you is what the Bible says. And the Bible the says that he was so stressed out that he sweated blood, which is a biological thing. I looked it up, it's so crazy. He, okay, let's say he didn't know the actual experience, but he know this is going to happen. Yeah. So he knew beforehand, it doesn't matter how much pain and agony, he knew it. Yeah. So having that knowledge, would you then still say, oh, let this cup be away from me? Because that shows that he was not willing. And not only that, my key point Did he is run this. away? Run Jonah, he hopped Jonah. on a boat and went to the other side Jonah of the wasn't God, was he? Because he wasn't willing. Excuse Jesus, me. Yeah. So the question you've asked is, was Jesus willing? And my answer is, no, he didn't a, run away. As a he God, went no, you're missing peacefully. The, you're missing the point. Okay. As a God, because he believes... As God, not a God. There's only Jesus, one. Jesus, you believe Jesus is a God? Is God. There's only one. There's only, there's only one God, so he is God. But yes? There's only one God, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that God died Jesus on the cross. Is God. Yes. And that God died on the cross. Amen. So when that God died on the cross, who controlled the universe? God. Another God? No God. So God didn't die? So God did not. If God died, he didn't actually die. He did die. Okay. Another discussion. So you have Jesus. So you asked the willingness okay. about Jesus. Jesus yeah. said, not according to my will, but according to your will. Your will be okay. done. Amen. So what was Jesus' will? I don't know what Jesus' will was. Let he this said, cup be away from me. He said, not my will, but your will. Okay. Yeah. Even though he knew okay. how hard and how painful it was going to be to my go friend, to the cross, friend. he loved us enough and my said, friend. I am now listen, going to listen, obey listen, my father. So listen, that comes to what I said earlier about the, the full could you, righteousness. Could you come to this verse? The two wills were there in congruence then. Were there were differences between them. Not according to my will, but according to your will. Amen. The text clearly indicates the wills were different. Yeah, maybe. So are you saying the God, the one God, yeah. has two different wills? Interesting question. And I'm not sure if the answer is. Not according to my will, but your will mm. be done. Excellent. So Jesus made up his mind to obey the Father's will, and then he did it. So that was no, his will. No, he made his mind to abandon his will, which was different than his Father's will. He said, not my will, but your will. That be is, so now you have two wills in conflict, and he submits to one will. So it's two different wills. So you have a God where there's conflicting wills within it. Interesting God. Yes. 
difference. They're contradictory wills. Not my will, but your will. It shows willingness to submit to the Father's will. It shows the wills were different. No, no he said, so he father, clarified. Ah, here we go. So here's Let the this cup be away from me. Meaning, this is his will. He doesn't want to die. If it is possible. If it, if it is want, possible. Of course. Yeah. He doesn't want to die. That was his will. But from the very beginning, you said his will was to die. So he, his will says, I don't want to die. And the Father says, you have to die. So within your one God, you have two different contradictory wills. Oh, well, I don't know about contradictory because in the end, the son. So I'd say the maybe... The son submitted so, to yeah. a greater will. Well, not greater. So actually, so we believe not the God is, God is three in one. So actually, so three, what one so God, three, three persons, one God. So, as I said, that, that explains why we have community and fellowship and desire for that. When you say three persons, is each person God? So the Holy Spirit is God, the Father is God, and the Son is God. So three before we go into the next step, you have to slow down God. and help them understand. Okay. Each person is God. What does it mean? Before we ask that, can I ask it's you a simple question, just for a bit of context? Do you fully understand everything about Allah? Do I comprehend God fully? No. Fantastic. Good. Neither do I. We're on Good. the same plane. So that's why I'm not going to ask you about something that Great. you cannot comprehend. Great. I'm going to ask you something that you can comprehend. I can simply tell you what the Bible says. Sure, there sure, are sure. clear verses in okay. the Bible where the Holy Spirit is ascribed characteristics that only God can possess, as is Jesus Christ, I know that you as is that. God. I have no problem with that. Fantastic. I know Christians believe that you believe in Jesus as God, the yeah. Holy Spirit as God, and the Father is God. And that there's and only I, God. I know that this is what you believe. Good. Yeah. My question to you is simple. Great. When you say the Holy Spirit is God, yeah. and the Father is God, and the Son is God, yeah. what do you mean by Holy Spirit is God? Is he all of God or part of God? Believe that he is God. All of him? You don't understand all of other? I don't understand ah, all of the God of the Bible. You say God is one. Yes. You don't say God is three, right? No. God Good. is three in one. Because you say God is three in one, you have to explain to us within this context of the three in one God. No, no. So this three... I have to explain to you. I can simply say hey, it's hey, what the Bible hey, says. Listen. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? Yeah. This three makes how many gods? Uh, three persons, one God. These three persons makes one God. Yeah. Good. Let's understand that clearly. Whoa. This three person makes one God, yeah. not one person. Yeah. Makes one God. One God. So one God comprises of three persons. Comprises. The Bible doesn't use the word comprises. That's what you mean. Three uh, persons I say in one God. I, I simply believe what the Bible says. Three, I didn't say it comprises. Three, three persons makes one God. That's what I don't you know mean. about makes. The Bible doesn't say makes. Okay. Because then so you're saying a there are, of God there are the three Spirit persons in one God. Amen. Good. Each person is all yes. of that God, right? Each person is God. No, each person is all of that God. The Bible doesn't say all of God. It says, if you have three persons yeah. that makes or that is one God, yeah. then obviously one person is not that one God, is it? Now you're using human logic, which is flawed. I'm I can only human. Tell you what the I'm only human. I can only use human logic. Are That's you human? Correct. Yeah, definitely. So use human logic. Yeah. Well, if you are not human, you can use other than... You're trying you... to understand the eternal God no, 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 of human listen. logic. Yeah. That's not going to work. You know, you know what happens? My brother, it's not Every work. time when a concept is discussed and yeah. you know it makes sense, you will bring this concept of human logic in. All that time that we discussed, were you logical? I were logical. Yeah, I was. But when we now come to discuss this logically, you know very well logic is speaking. We're discussing a divine topic. We're okay. discussing no, no. God. Who says logic is any place in life? I didn't say person, I logically no, no. understand it. I didn't say I understand it. I just said it's what the Bible is says. Is the Son equally knowledgeable, powerful, eternal, like the Father? Well, the Bible doesn't say things in those senses. But the Bible does say is that Jesus is God. So I'm not what here to explain. What does the word God mean? What does the word God mean? God is God, the creator of all. Okay. Is God, when you say God, yeah. he's all powerful, yeah. all knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. Yes, you don't know? actually, well, yeah. So you don't know God is all-powerful or not? So I can simply tell you what the Bible says. No, no, according to your Bible, yeah, tell me from what you understand from the Bible. Yeah. When you say God, Jesus is God, is he all-knowledgeable? From Jesus eternity all to eternity. Is he deficient? In fact, to put it in another way, <laughs> Jesus being God, or claimed to be God, or using the description God, is he deficient in knowledge? Fantastic question. Let's see what the Bible says. So the book of Hebrews actually explains how, uh, explains a little bit, reveals, the, pulls the curtain back a little bit on how an eternal God be, could become human. Eat, sleep, drink, 
go to the loo, all those things, Jesus did it. He was fully human like all of us. That's how he could die. And Hebrews pulls the back the curtain a little bit on how that was all possible. And this is what it says. Um, in the past, uh, Hebrews chapter 1. In the past, God spoke, to our, uh, through, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, even once through a donkey. Crazy story. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. Jesus sustains everything. After He had provided purification for sins, that's when He died on the cross, I've been made clean of all my sins through Jesus. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So He became as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father? No, God never said that to any of the angels. Or again, I will be His father and He will be my son. No, God never said that to the angels either, but He did say it to Jesus. And again, God brings His firstborn into the world, He says, Let all God's angels worship Him. So the angels are instructed to worship Jesus. In speaking of the angels, He says, He makes His angels spirits and His servants flames of fire. But about the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, will last forever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of Your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, Your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth. Talking about Jesus, he says, you laid the foundations of the earth. Jesus is the creator. Uh, uh, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will wear out like a garment, but you will roll them up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same. And your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? No, He didn't say that to any of the angels. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit the kingdom of God? So there we have so a you read, slight... You read, one second, you read the whole chapter. Yeah. So from this chapter, can you now summarize the answer? To my question, yeah. is Jesus deficient in knowledge? Because you read this chapter to answer that question. Yeah. Is Jesus deficient in knowledge? No. So so right now, no. He's seated on okay. the throne in heaven. So is, this, is, is Jesus, as a son of God, is eternally all knowledge, right? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say that. Why are you doubting that he's eternally all knowledge? Is it so, possible for God to be not all knowledge? Are you saying there can be a God who is deficient in knowledge? No. Good. So according to your belief, Jesus has no deficiency in knowledge. He's eternally all knowledge. Yeah? That's what you believe? No. You don't believe that? No. So he can be deficient? Now, no. no. So Jesus was fully God. Okay. And, but then he became, let he me, was born. Let me help you to so, clarify this point. So there's three points in history. Let there's before you. Jesus was born. Excuse me, I want, you, I want you to help you to clarify this point. Sure. Before God created this universe, yeah. there was these three persons in everything. Did Jesus know everything then? Yes. Right. And then Jesus Wait, was born. slow down. Oh, sorry, sorry. If he knew everything then, yes. did he know the past? Well, he knew everything then, yes. Good. He knew the present. He knew the future. Yes. If he uh, already, outside of, if he, outside of time, okay, let's yeah. understand that. If he already knows the future, can he then not know the future later? So there's three points in history. At that point, he knew everything. But then he was born of a virgin. He became fully man. Even in our weaknesses, he was even tempted to sin, but he resisted sin. He you know, resisted even question. the devil. So you're talking about the human. I'm not talking about the human. Yeah. So I'm the saying, human wasn't created before the creation of the world. So I'm saying there's three points in history. There's before Jesus was became human and he knew everything but I'm not then. talking about the human don't yeah. you understand well and then there's the so I'm not, talking about the divine oh, the divine, divine. so Jesus was the, is the was the, divine. was the divine according to your understanding the divine knew the future yes while the divine Jesus or divine son of God knew the future is it possible for him not to know the future later when he became a man yes as a divine yes if the divine knew the future, the divine will always know the future. No. Okay, what does it mean knowing the future? To know the future. He knows the future already or not? Uh, now, okay. yes. Okay, when he was on earth, let me no. Let me help you again. Well, yes, Imagine now, between 
time frame, right? Past, present, and future. So this is no, no. Let me give you an example. Is, so I want, Can I give you an example? Yes, yeah, this is past, and this is future, and this is the present. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. The divine son knows one, two, three, four, and he knows what comes after four, which is five. Yeah. Even if the divine sign temporarily comes to this earth here. As a divine being, he knew what comes next, or and he knew already what comes next. Five. Wait, wait. Brilliant. Is it possible for the divine, while knowing all of it already, then not to know? Yes. So he, hold your hand up. This is really helpful. So this is when he was a human. He I'm became, not talking about humanity. Yeah, so I'm talking about divinity. Jesus was fully human as well. But I'm talking about divinity. As a divine entity, yeah. did he know? He was fully human and fully God at the sorry, same sorry, time. Sorry. I am not interested in the flesh part. You I'm interested in the divine part. When he became flesh, was he also divine? Yes. Good. When he was divine, was he knowledgeable? Yes. Good. So, human is irrelevant. No, it's because not. we. Are, wait. You wait. 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 Yeah. As a divine, he knew the future. Yes. Good. So, the divine Jesus knew the future. Yes. He doesn't forget. Well, no. Of course not. No. Yes. So good. Is he also all powerful, the divine son? Yeah. So, yeah. so he has power, like what you expect, all sovereignty, all power. He sustains okay. all things. Yeah. Is it possible for the divine son to keep a secret knowledge from the father? Is it possible for the divine son to keep a secret knowledge from the father? Ooh, is he powerful is... enough to keep it secret? That's an interesting question. I don't know. The Bible doesn't answer that question. Okay. Let me give you the possibilities. He can keep it secret, he cannot. Well, let's analyze each one. Well, if he cannot, then he wasn't all powerful. You're trying to answer a question oh, the Bible me. doesn't answer. Look, look, look. There are only two answers. Well, maybe. Maybe? maybe. Okay, what's the third answer? I don't know. I said the Bible doesn't if, we don't know, if we don't know, don't bring it in. If you know, bring it in. I'm and saying then we'll discuss. the question's not in the Bible, so no, no, you're trying to bring it in. No, no, no. The concept is there. Either the son is powerful enough to keep it secret, or he's not. If he's not, then he's not all powerful, so he's not God, because God is all powerful. So if he wasn't able, then he cannot be God. We left up with one other alternative. He is able to keep it secret. If he's able to keep it secret, is the father all knowledgeable enough to find out? Two answers. Firstly, yes, he is knowledgeable, the father, to find out, or the father is not knowledgeable to find out. If he's not knowledgeable, he's not God. If he's able to find out, then Jesus failed to, not Jesus, the divine son failed to keep it secret because he found out. So either way, you cannot have both. You can either have Jesus as ignorant, not God, or Jesus being all powerful and yet the Father not being God. So, two answers. Firstly, mm -hmm. you're applying human limited human logic to the divine. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You're thinking you're smart enough to understand God and limit Him by your human logic and saying there isn't a third option. Maybe there's, maybe there isn't. So that's my third on first answer. I'm not going to say what God can and can't do. He's God. And secondly, you're asking me to answer a question. And are, you say, are you secondly, saying... Secondly, 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 you're asking me to answer a hypothetical. Can you stop doing that? Yeah? Okay. No, no, I'm not, you stop doing that. You're asking me to answer a hypothetical that's not proposed by the Bible. Um, so, so I have no answer to give. Do you know why hypothetical sometimes can be used? For example, oh, yeah. do you believe God is all loving? Yes, because the Bible okay. says that. Now, is it possible for God to be totally antithesis of that? While all loving, all, all loving, He becomes all evil. All evil. Is it possible? No. Why did you say no? You should have said oh. You, know, human, you can't use human logic there, and I, you know it's beyond our comprehension. You didn't. What did you use to say no? The Bible. Because the Bible says God is light in him, there is no darkness at all. God uh, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So I can only tell you what the Bible says. Bible, I believe this Bible is true. says that God yeah. became tempted. Yeah, was God 40 was days. For yeah. 40 days he was tempted. Yeah. So you are just contradicting yourself. No, I said God cannot be tempted and he was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness. Let me you read make James. up your mind. Let me read James. Oh, that is true. So now you see now it becomes humanity. Every time you say now, oh, he didn't know, humanity didn't know. So, so now here is now the actual problem that we need to discuss. What happened in the incarnation? When the divine became human, exactly what happened? You will now see that you have to abandon your belief altogether oh, wow. if you are a rational human being. Wow. What happened in the incarnation? What happened in the incarnation? Yeah. 
I was able to be forgiven of all my sins. No, this God, what happened. The divine son, what happened to him? Oh, what happened to him? Yeah. When the God divine, became man. When the divine son became a man, yeah. man that he became was ignorant. Ignorant? What do you mean ignorant? He didn't know the hour, right? Oh, he didn't know everything. Yeah, yeah. He was fully so, human. So he became ignorant? He was fully human. Good. So he became ignorant? Fully human. I can only give you the answer to the Bible Excuse gives. Me. Yeah. Did he know everything when no. he became human? No. Right. If you don't know everything, you must be ignorant. Because God is not ignorant. God is all knowledgeable. He became ignorant, which is the opposite of all knowledgeable. If you are all knowledgeable, you are never ignorant. Do you accept that? This is the point I was trying to make earlier. So that the three points in history. Before the Incarnation, after the Incarnation, during the Incarnation. During the Incarnation, Jesus was fully man as well. As people, we don't Just know all things. Just before the Incarnation. That's why God Jesus. can't die, but Jesus, who was fully man and fully God, I want you to discuss died. this point. During the Incarnation, just yeah. before that, he was all knowledgeable. Yes. And when he incarnated, was he still all knowledgeable? No, he had emptied himself. Good. You now we're talking. So you have an all knowledgeable God. Yeah who empties himself and becomes less than knowledgeable. Yes. So when, when you say he was unknowledgeable to begin with, yes. can you empty an unknowledgeable being or a person from his own knowledge? The Bible says that he emptied himself. I no, no, no. Sure it's not what the Bible says. Well, that, that, if, you're if, asking me about the Bible. If, says, a, book says, says. No, if a book says that. You're asking, can God? And my answer no, is, the listen, Bible says listen. he did. If you have a concept of unknowledgeable being, yeah. Yeah. that means unknowledgeable means all the knowledge. Then you are then asserting this unknowledgeable being empties himself from unknowledgeable. Yes. All knowledge. That's not unknowledgeable, is it? Now the all knowledge has gaps. So again, it's not so again, you're trying to explain the divine with human logic, and I'm just giving you what the Bible says. I am saying you have God. Okay, let's make it even simple. God is eternally living, right? What do you mean? He's ever existent, everlasting. Always exist. Yes, I'm with you. Can he cease to exist? Can God cease to exist? No. Why not? Then there would be nothing. No. He's sustaining Why? all this. If God Can, stopped, wow. If, that's if you a, wanted to, if you wanted that's to. That's a crazy if, question. If you wanted to. It would be, there wouldn't even be nothing. There would be an absence of nothing. So Sorry. you're saying an ever-living wow. being can cease to exist? Sorry? You are saying, you're even thinking, oh, he is everlasting, ever-living, eternal being can cease to exist. Did you even understand what eternal and everlasting meant? Oh, I don't. And you proposed the Probably hypothetical of what if he, he stopped existing. That's Look, crazy. You have to reject the contrary to what you've asserted. Sorry, if you assert God is eternal and everlasting, yes. you have to reject the opposite that he can cease to exist. What do you mean by cease to exist? He will no longer anymore. Well, the Bible doesn't say that Jesus it's ceased to Bible. exist. It's not what you affirm. If you affirm God is eternal and everlasting, yeah. Then, contrary to that assertion, which is ceasing to exist, yeah. you have to reject that because oh. you have affirmed that you will never cease to exist. Oh, and so the Bible tells me that God is eternal, so I believe that. And it's so, about, yes, and so, yes, I'll affirm the other thing if I must. If the Bible says God can lie, you will affirm it. If the Bible said it. Oh, wow. Then I probably then wouldn't believe the Bible. See, look, because then it would have, then it would have look, contradictions. Look, it doesn't have look, contradictions, look, so I believe it. It's not a contradiction. You see, when well, we, the Bible says God can listen, lie, listen, so it also says God listen, can listen, lie. Listen, I'd be like, well, I don't, you this is a stupid book. I wouldn't believe it. You have two methods to judge. One you're saying using rationality and logic and reason. Yes. And when it comes to the Bible, for example, if the Bible said God can lie yeah. and cease to exist, yeah. you would say, I'm going to reject the Bible. Why? Because oh, yeah. then, it then it would have contradictions. Okay. So, because somewhere so, else it says God can't lie. Sorry. Sorry. So was it about contradiction that you reject this statement? Sorry? Was it because of a contradiction you rejected that statement, that God can lie? Or was it because it says that in the book? I reject. If you ask me, can God lie? And I say no. Uh, my, if that answer, book said yeah. God can lie and cease to exist, are you rejecting that book because it says in the book or because it's a contradiction? If the Bible said both that God can lie and, and, that, exist. and that God can't lie, then it would be proof that the Bible is not true. So I would reject Why would both it be proof that it's not true? Because then it's contradicting. So, so you're now using something called the principle of contradiction. 
Yeah. Or non-contradiction. You're using that to judge that statement. Yes. Likewise, I've given you some well, statements. Using that to, yeah, judge I've the given statement you some statements. Yeah. If you believe God is all knowledgeable, yeah. can he cease to exist? The answer is no, because it violates the same thing that you asserted. It violates the principle of non-contradiction. You flip from one attribute to another. You no. said you said all knowing and then cease to no, exist. I'm talking about power, existence, and knowledge. Three examples of you so far. So uh, power. God's power. Yeah. God's existence. Yeah. And God's knowledge. Okay. Yeah. I understand what you're talking about power, I uh, uh, understand what you're talking about knowledge. So Jesus, when he was fully man, he didn't know everything, which is incredible. It's like asking this but question. Exi why, why, why existence? I don't see the relevance, relevance of that. Because if you believe he will always be in existence, yeah. you have to reject the other assertion that he can cease to exist. So you're using it as a premise to say... If, okay. Isn't that the case? Okay, I see what you're pointing. Good. Your so point. the problem is that the Bible's you, answer is that it's not what the Bible says or not. It's that's what I believe. The, that is what we're discussing. We're discussing what the Bible says. But if the Bible says something which is contradictory, yeah. like God is all knowledgeable and can become ignorant, yeah. you have to reject that too. No. So you have a double standard. Accept one thing and you don't accept the other thing because. So the difference is, can I get my? Do I fully understand lying and telling the truth? Yeah. Do I fully understand the incarnation of Jesus Christ? No. So what happened in the incarnation? Do I fully understand God? Okay, you said earlier you don't back, fully understand back. Allah. You're forcing me to fully understand God. In the incarnation, I don't, so we need to come back to believe that He died for my sins. We need to come back to incarnation. In the incarnation, you have a divine being that took in another nature, human nature. So, Something did like God that. add to His nature or remove some of its nature? What happened? The Bible doesn't answer that question. What it does say is that He emptied Himself. I couldn't find it. I thought it was in Hebrews, in to be honest. It's in, it's in Philippians. Ah, okay. So God awesome. emptied from his, himself. That means yeah. God got rid of something from his nature. Is it possible for God to do that? Well, it says so, yeah. So if a book says God can become ignorant tomorrow, just because it says so, you'll accept it? No, it's not the Bible. I believe the Bible. You're not being very logical and reasonable, are you? I'm just telling if you what Bible, I believe and no, no, no. what I believe is If the Bible. Bible says God can tomorrow become fully ignorant, doesn't know the future at all, you'll believe in it, right? If the Bible says that. If the Bible said it. Oh, then I'd reject the Bible. Because then it would <laughs> so it's not about what the Bible says. Itself. You are actually now using another criteria, which so is... The, the Bible contains... Sense. So, what I'm affirming is that I believe the Bible. If the Bible changed, then it would no longer fit the fit the reasons why I believe. So if the Bible contradicts. So if it did, then, then I would you reject, reject it. it. Yes. Yeah. So the Bible says God is unknowledgeable, and yet He doesn't know the hour. Yeah. Because He's emptying Himself. Contradictory. No, that's again, that's God. No. I don't the Bible fully says, understand God. No, the Bible says God is unknowledgeable, but yet the Son doesn't know; only the Father knows. Yeah. That's a contradiction. No. For, it, for, for me to claim that that is a contradiction, I would have to have complete understanding of the limitations of God. Is it possible for God to, to do that? For that to be true of God? Yeah, I don't fully understand God. You said earlier you don't fully understand Allah. Are there things in the Quran that, that Allah did that you don't fully understand? Again, what you're doing is, when we are talking about a specific subject we, which you know very clearly, we know what it means. I For example, your argument is not, very no, good. No, no, I fully understand we, it. No, Do I understand? When, no, you understand it. Yeah, yeah. Not like, I know you understand yeah, it. It's a good I know and understand. Yeah. It. No one knows the hour. Not even the angels in heaven. Yeah. Not even the sun, but the father. Yeah. Now you have two persons mentioned here. Yeah. The father and the son. The father knows and the son doesn't know. Yeah. The father knowing, I don't have a problem with that. I expect the father to know when the world's going to come to an end. If the son doesn't know. I have a big problem. Why? Because the sun is supposed to be all knowledgeable. If you're all knowledgeable, you cannot not know. You should always know. Because the sun doesn't know, then he wasn't all knowledgeable to begin with. Because if you are all knowledgeable to begin with, you'll always be all knowledgeable. So there you've stepped beyond the text. So there is that verse which says, Jesus emptied himself. So the question is, what does that mean? And maybe that explains emptied that. Himself. Yeah. That statement is something that is, I say is gibberish. With all due respect, I apologize for making that statement. No, it's like saying, you God, don't believe the Bible. No, no, fine. it's like saying, the Bible says, God can become not God. It, does that statement make any sense? God can become not God. Oh, God can make himself not God. That's a funny statement. Gibberish statement. It's a gibberish statement. Perhaps. Nonsensical. Perhaps. Just like God emptying himself is a gibberish, nonsensical statement. No. <laughs> So God, then you're judging the text. No, no, no. I'm saying, saying the concept 
that God can empty himself from his nature, what he is, is a gibberish statement. God is with his nature. He cannot go against his nature. He cannot. Right? You're saying this limitation should be placed on God. No. And the Bible says, no, 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 oh, no, 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 it's not. No, 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 my friend. God's nature, yes. is it changing? How do we know, God, how do we know God's okay. nature? Is this nature the Bible changing tells us God's nature. Or changing or unchanging. Changing or unchanging. Changing or unchanging. What does the Bible say? I'm not sure on that question. You need to find out. Yeah. If, you, if you do find out that God's nature doesn't change, then you have a big problem. Because now you realize God emptying himself, changing his nature. Are you sure? Does it say that he changed his nature? What does emptying mean? I don't know. <laughs> of course you do know. <laughs> emptying means you no longer are unknowledgeable. You don't know the future. You don't know when the world's going to come to an end. I never claimed from the beginning of this whole discussion. I never said I fully understand God. You're not fully understanding it. You do understand that point very clearly. That if you are unknowledgeable, it makes no sense then to say you don't know. If I know your name. Yeah, I know. Okay, what's your name? I've affirmed oh, no, no, that Jesus name? didn't know everything. What's your name, my friend? Michael, sorry. Michael, I'm Monsu. Monsu. If I know your name, done this hours yeah. ago. Sorry. Michael, if I know your name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, yes. and I never forget. Wow. If I never forget, because you know I'm a divine being, God forgive me for using this example. Go for it, go for it. Then I will always know your name. Yeah. I will always know your name, regardless of where and which situation, because I do not forget because I am knowledgeable. If you were God, and if those were the limitations that your book had declared. No, and if, if the book was true, then if, that would be true. If my nature was that I am unknowledgeable and I don't change my unknowledgeable nature, then I will always know your name is Michael. When you say God emptied himself of his knowledge, that means he was unknowledgeable and changed his nature to become ignorant. So I don't think it's I don't think it says that he emptied himself of his knowledge. I, ca I can't himself? remember where that verse what? is. Philippians two. Philippians two. What did he empty there. himself from? So the thing is, how do we know what God's nature is? By what the Bible tells says. us. And so we cannot okay. place limitations on God. Agree. That the what Bible does God say about say. his knowledge? Is he unknowledgeable or and partially ignorant? Oh, no, we're right. There's a passage which says, God knows when I sleep and when I wake, when I lie down. And it seems to be making the, the point says that God is all knowledgeable. It seems to make the point that God is all knowing. Yeah. yeah. So if God says he's all knowledgeable, you have to reject the opposite, which is not all knowledgeable. Except that that's not the logic that the Bible uses. It's that's not, not the logic. logic that the Bible says. If the Bible tells us things which clearly show that Jesus was fully God and fully man. And that doesn't make sense. Do you know why? If you're fully it God, make sense. if you're fully God, are you saying that you understand it and it doesn't make sense? I'll tell you what I understand. You don't understand. If you're fully God, that means you are 100 percent God and zero percent man. Says who? That's what fully God means, right? Fully God means 100 percent God. Let me tell you. What. Fully God means 100 percent God and zero percent everything else. That means zero percent potato, zero percent tomato, zero percent man, zero percent woman, zero percent tree. Do you agree? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. If you're hundred percent God, you must be zero percent potato and zero percent banana, right? Oh well, not in Jesus' case. In Jesus' case, he was two hundred percent. And you don't understand what he means. God so you don't man. understand what a hundred percent God means then. Hundred percent God fully means fully is there is nothing fully other than fully God means. That's what the Bible says. Michael. Well, this one. This one. Yeah, this one. There is only one Bible. Well, Bible just means a, a collection of books. You got older books. You got. You got gospels that aren't even Wait. accepted. Do you go back to the old uh, Gnostic gospel, the Coptic Christianity, and, or, be, uh, or, yeah. or are you just going for the medieval one? This is the medieval one. Medieval one, no. I mean, what's his name? What's, what's Jesus' real name? Why, why, change, why change the name? Why change the name? Translate the name. No, but there was no J's, and he had a completely different name. Christ is a title. It's, it's yeah, all no, different. Yeah. Means now, king. look how right, the confusion is removed. This is a very small. Surah or chapter in the Quran okay. say he yeah. is Allah. Sorry, where am I looking? This one. Say uh, he is Allah. Cool. Who is one? Allah, Allah the Allah. eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, born nor is there him. to him any equivalent. Cool. This is a nutshell, in a nutshell, the concept of God in Islam. God is one and only and unique, absolute, independent, that he's not a father of anyone or children of anyone, and there is totally uniqueness to God. He's unlike anything. There's no you know, anyone equal to him in any way, shape, or form. That makes sense or not? But then he said, cancel after your heart and your mind will agree with this concept. Yes or no? So do I fully understand Allah? No. Do I understand what the words no, no. on the say, the, on the page mean? Before statements there, does it make sense? He is what? 
that makes sense. Is he an eternal refuge? Makes sense. He neither begets nor is born. That seems rather odd. <laughs> I read that. Actually, I read that earlier and I underlined because it seemed kind of odd. If he was um, born, would he be one? Uh, there would be someone else. Yeah. No, well, no, no. What, what seemed odd was that it would be written in the first place. Um, so look at the concept. Who was asking that question? Wait a second. Let's understand actually, the concept. Yeah, yeah. If God was one, yeah. he must be absolute. Absolute. He has to be absolute because he's the only one God. What do you mean by absolute? Absolute means the there is no deficiency and imperfection. Absolute. There in is his no attributes. deficiency with God. Yeah. I can agree with that. If he was absolute and he's one, then he doesn't have a son because he will not be one anymore and he's got some kind of uh, another likeness to him. So he cannot have a son or a daughter or a father to remain absolute and one. If he has a father or a son, then he's not one anymore and then there's someone like him. So if God was one and absolute and independent, he cannot be born, he cannot be a father or, or, or the mother of anyone, and there has to be total uniqueness to God. This, is a, this, is, this, is, this concept a fantastic is, moment. This is concept is what this we is are inviting you to. Yes, this is a fantastic moment where we can point out the very clear difference that the God described in the Quran and the God described in the Bible are two different gods. My God is not your God. Which your one makes God sense? Is not my God. Which one makes sense? Which one makes sense? Yeah. Well, which you, one? Um, did, did that make sense? Wait, which I'm one close. made a way? No, did that make sense? There's still Do I understand that? Did it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Does your concept of God make sense? Does my concept of God make sense? Where one God becomes ignorant. Makes sense. Part of God becomes ignorant. Or person of God becomes ignorant. Do I understand it? That doesn't make sense. Yes. Doesn't make sense. Does it, do I understand it? No, no. No, not understanding. Does it make sense that a person of God becomes ignorant? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense because he did that out of his love for me. So my God, my God, your knowledge will become ignorant makes sense. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So my God, you know, we have to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, Because you're right. you just said, it. you just said it yourself. Yeah. God, who is all knowledgeable, becomes ignorant, and it makes sense. This is where we have to say there's a limit to how much we can continue in discussion. The all knowledgeable becomes ignorant. Yeah. And it makes sense. I have to. I have to really say you need he to. He did really more than that. No, no. He, he was I, humiliated, naked, no, 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 and no, 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 nailed no, no. to a tree. It's like saying God the, It's like saying the existent God became non-existent. Oh, it doesn't say that. But you will say, yeah. That's the love of God. Imagine God for His love, He became non-existent. You say, Hallelujah. Would you say that? That wouldn't make sense. No, no. That wouldn't make sense. Do you know why it would make sense? Because if your existence always going to be existent, it doesn't make sense to say you can be non-existent. If you're unknowledgeable, it doesn't make sense you can be partially ignorant. Anyway, Michael, it's been nice talking to you. It was a really good chat. Uh, so Thank take you. care and yeah. read the Quran. I've just introduced uh, you yeah. to one small no, chapter. I am reading it. So I'm reading carry it. on yeah. reading and you'll learn what the real concept of God is. Really and then you'll see your heart and mind which way it leads to. Okay? Yeah. You and you care. as well. Keep reading okay? the Bible. Take care. God bless. Uh, so just having a good chat. Um, so I came here with the Quran just trying to ask questions. I had some things underlined trying to find out a better understanding of the Quran. We ended up chatting about about kind of the about Jesus basically and it was actually wonderful earlier on we uh, he basically was asking me to explain salvation and propitiatory uh, penal substitutionary atonement which was fantastic um, and I got to actually speak and tell them that Jesus loves us and died for our sins and that the wrath of God was poured on us and actually he didn't really have an answer for that which was odd and then he kind of got stuck a bit on understanding how Jesus was both God and man which I said right at the beginning that I didn't understand and yet he kept pushing me to understand something that I don't understand because it's God how can you understand God um, and if you don't understand God he claims that it then doesn't make sense well you're saying I'm looking at God the infinite being and the bits and pieces that I see don't make sense. And I'm saying it's God. You're not going to understand God. Either He died for your sins to save you because He loves you and therefore you have hope of eternal life or there is no hope and we're all damned in our sins. So yeah, really good chat and I hope that the crowd um, heard the message that we that God loves us and can be saved. And yeah, God bless.